As I was making my way down the roads of South Carolina, Sea Island Parkway, I decided to venture into St. Helena Island, a Gullah Island. On my way there, I passed near Paris Island, a place that was once Gullah owned, that now serves as training grounds for the United States Marines. Anyway, I was hungry and I was looking for some real authentic Gullah seafood. And there it was, the Gullah Grub. The Gullah Grub is nationally known, internationally known as a matter of fact, and has been profiled on network programs such as Martha Stewart's Living and visited by well-known chef extraordinaire, Anthony Bourdain. The owner is Chef Bill Green. Chef Green opened this restaurant around 15 years ago. And here at the Gullah Grub, their motto is eat healthy, eat local, eat fresh, and eat in season. So that's exactly what I did. I ordered a little bit of everything. Fried shark, shrimp with rice, greens of course, mashed potatoes and cornbread, and I washed it all down with something they call swamp water. Yes, swamp water. It's not as bad as it sounds. It's really just a mixture of lemonade and tea. And I tell you what, everything was delicious. With my stomach full, I sat down to talk with Oshi Green, the daughter of Chef Green, who's been working in the kitchen since the day it opened. I quickly learned that here at the Grub, just like everything Gullah, it's a family affair. Everyone chips in and helps when they can and however they can. There's an older brother named Bubba, whose actual name is William Green III, his wife Courtney, and their newest addition, Zaria, Oshi, and a family friend named Bruce, who's a dishwasher and all-around great helper. There's also another brother named Jamie, who wasn't in the kitchen that day because, according to Oshi, she says he just can't cook to save his soul. Oshi tells me that the beginning of the Gullah Grub kind of just happened. It happened when her daddy went down to make a proposal for a side gig of cooking for the local folks. But I told him, I said, when you go down there, you're never going to come back because you're just going to fall in love with the area. Because it's like what Charleston used to be before it became um, more tourist friendly. In other words, locally authentic. No frills or anything over the top, just good cooking by good folks. It kind of um, changed for the newcomers versus keeping the old ways. And and that's what Buford has done and is trying to continue to do. Oh, she says that buying land to settle on while trying to build a business was a little tricky. And this uneasiness dates back to an element that is pervasive in the Gullah culture, to trust or not trust the outsider. He was able to find land um, that was reasonable because like here, it's most, it's not so much real, real estate or um, dealing with real estate Realer, uh, how I say it, realtors, there you go, is mostly dealing with um, individuals because a lot of them don't trust the, the real estate agents because this, these lands have been in their family for generations after generation and they just want to make sure that there's nobody's going to come in and build a big condo or drive up the property taxes. In 2000, the Gullah Geechee officially became an internationally recognized nation, but the tax hikes are making it impossible for the indigenous group to continue to live there. Throughout the media, ABC News, NBC News, CNN, and online, the reports about the threats to this culture, they are real and sometimes unimaginable. Some say the heightened property taxes are threatening the Gullah culture into extinction. Oh, she says that it's just not about the tax hikes, though. It's still a trust issue. It's about individuals wanting to build communities while breaking down communities at the same time. Has it gotten any better or? Mm, no. And the way, the reason why it hasn't gotten really any better is because of the generation, my generation, and the ones to come, and the generation before mine, you know. Unless you're an elder, you really don't have the appreciation that you need to have for land. Which means people sell. Oh, she goes on to say it's even a bit racial, meaning what is taught to one group is not necessarily taught to the other. Um, I think in a white culture, you are taught to, that without land, you have no roots. Well, in our culture, it's not that way. We kind of just kind of focus on the, the, the easier, easier access things. We want the outside appearance versus, okay, yeah, it may not look like I have a lot, but I have this piece of land. And if anything happens, this is mine. You know, no one can take that from me. And with the generations that came after our elders, um, they kind of lost that way. 
So when that happens, the elders can't really talk for themselves. They can't really speak for themselves. Not only can they not speak for themselves, there seems to be a disconnection between the mainland and Sea Island people and the policies. There's also a disconnection between generations who still live on the islands and the ones who have moved away. And all of these elements simply exacerbate the situation. They can't really speak for themselves. They don't really know their rights. And without the new generation saying, hey, Ma, you don't have to sell this. There are organizations out there. There are, you know, grants that we can get. Our house is over 100 years old. They can't tear this down. It's historic now. Without having someone tell you that, you don't know. One thing that is known is that even if the young generation wanted to buy and own land for preservation reasons, because of unfair tax hikes that have always been a threat, achieving this dream is almost impossible. And because of these threatening situations, it is even more imperative to record the Gullah culture while it still exists. It's like losing a bit of American history each time a family sells, moves, or a business closes. But there is still hope, even if it's just the hope of understanding and clarification. We want the American dream, but not realizing that it was on our backs that that American dream was able to come, to come to light. For now, the American dream still lives on at the Gullah Grub. And as I make my way from this place of good eating and lots of history, I can hear them calling me, saying, take a hana for come, which means thank you for coming. No worries, I'll be back. <laughs>